Hello everyone, quick editor's note right here, I'd like to give a shout out to DJ Hedgehog28's brother who recently had a birthday. DJ himself, a fantastic member of the GGF community. So, on behalf of the Fox and the Fox Republic, happy birthday to DJ Hedgehog28's brother. Hello everyone, I'm your host Get Good Fox, and it looks like we're just gonna start this right off the bat, getting attacked. I'm just trying to like clear the area to start the recording, but then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna start the recording. If you guessed it was time for some more State of Decay 2, well, you would be right. It is in fact time for some more State of Decay 2. So, uh, right off the bat, we've got ourselves a nice quest to do. Looks like these guys wanna move into a whole new base, and that's exactly what we are going to help them with. As uh, someone asked, in the comments section, uh, you know why. What's the big deal about everyone being upset about the infestations? It's not like they're hard to destroy. And, uh, you know, the, you're right. They're not hard to destroy. The thing is that they're just annoying. You know, like killing a mosquito is not, it's not hard to do. Smack it with your hand, spray it with some insecticide, swat it with a fly swatter. It's not hard to do, but it's annoying. You know, washing the dishes, you know, unless you have a humongous family, if you're like, if you're just by yourself washing the dishes, it's not hard to do, but it's annoying. It's just like, it basically, destroying the infestations, there's not a lot of reward to it. And so it's just annoying, like you have to do it too often. It's, it, the main issue with it is it's too frequent. It, it's so frequent that it just feels like it's kind of like, oh boy, time to do the chores again. Okay, another quest popping in. Looks like somebody wants food. That's perfectly fine. Food is one of the least important resources right now because of the Super Waifu Cafeteria Squad. Uh, for those of you may be interested, uh, the Twitch progression is all the way to Cascade Hills now. So yes, we have nearly been on every single map. It's quite nice. Yeah, okay. So if you want to see That's more of State of Decay 2 content, remember you can catch about, oh, That's good news. Two, about two hours of content per day except on the days I work, which is I typically only work twice a week. So you can get a lot of extra State of Decay 2 content if you drop in on my Twitch channel. If you just just come by, say hi. It's it's very interactive. You get to chat with the content creator. It's great. So these guys apparently want to move into, I guess, this storage yard or something. That's fine. And it looks like we can upgrade over here. Oh, no, we can't. How interesting. Let's locate you know, some b -b 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 building materials. We've got people on it. So close, I can almost taste it. Okay, let's see what we got here. I'm just gonna crash in. Now, like I said, destroying that infestation, it wasn't hard. Now, and, and in, this, in, in this specific case, it wasn't annoying because it was part of a quest, so the reward was good. But it's it's annoying when you have to do them. I think what would make it fine, this is what I think would make it be a good idea. More influence per infestation based on the severity. So a level 3 severity would pay out more than a level 1. And then a reward for having no infestations. I think a good reward would be morale and influence. Basically, like, maybe... 20% more influence if you have no infestations and how about 10 morale? 10 morale and 20% influence for no infestations. I think that would be great. I think it would be, that then you would actually want to have no infestations because then, and then also by having no infestations, you know you're denying sieges to your base, which is a source of money. Remember, sieges pay out a lot of money. So it would, it's a good return. It's like you get 20% bonus influence so you get e e you're denying yourself a source of influence but you're getting a source of influence so it'd be great i about to say i can do the head squish don't act like i can't do it so what we need from here is a food rucksack i should probably take a break before i fall over 
And who wants the food? All right, hold on. I'm on my way. The hungry survivors want some food. Now we can go deliver that, and while we're there, we should probably also look for the materials. And we can stack these up. Also, a repair kit would be prudent. Right there. Alrighty. Um, looks like the building materials are somewhere over there. It's going to be in a building that uh, is logical to have building materials. That's the only thing I know. So I'll be looking for like a shed or like a car garage, etc. But we won't know until we get there. Uh, someone asked, what am I going to do? Am I going to visit all the maps? Well, yeah, that's the that's the plan. Remember that there's a really, really good chance that State of Decay 3 isn't going to be here for several years. Two years, maybe more. I might, it might be nowhere even close to being ready, actually. So, I am going to be doing what I can to stretch out the State of Decay content over the time over time so these kinds of uh, episodes or these kinds of series where we revisit all the bases and i kind of give you my thoughts about them i, I think it's good it, it should take a pretty long time to get through all of it which is great Oh boy, lots of zombies to torch. Now, another person asked on YouTube, like, I guess this is kind of like me answering comments that I remember off the top of my head. You know, Fox, have you ever done a playthrough where you didn't use these overpowered things like the, um, you know, like the vehicle, the pyro launcher? And the answer is yes. Actually, my first Lethal Zone playthrough, I did not use... I, I actually added... It was my first experience with Lethal Zone, meaning I had the least practice. So the, I, I said, you know what? Let me double down and make it even harder. And what I said was, I will not use any DLC, and, and I also won't use any OP things. And uh, yeah, that was the first season of Lethal Zone. So you can watch that. And you get to see me at my least amount of practice, so I, pl I do play pretty cautiously. And I, 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 I go through I hate it. wasting time on places like this. I hear a zombie, but I'm like, where is he? Oh. The other thing I said is because, you know, people are like, oh, but, like, what if I can't get these OP things? Well, the thing is, everyone can get these OP things because they used to be behind a paywall. You used to have to own the DLC, but the thing is, that isn't the case anymore. You don't have to own the DLC anymore, and I will show you. Okay, so it's going to be here because this is just a normal everyday home. God, I am so sick of plague zombies. Yeah, and that's a carport, little shed looking area right there. So it's going to be right over here now let me show you you can get all the op things you want so everyone has this radio command here vehicle delivery ultimate edition vehicle delivery now on lethal zone it will cost a thousand influence but save up a thousand influence and get yourself a impaler then you have the same vehicle i'm using originally you had to own the ultimate edition but they made that ultimate edition feature something that's available to everyone so everyone can have that op thing now what about the pyro launcher once again everyone has access to it originally the independence pack was behind the paywall you had to own the dlc not anymore you can get independence pack weapon delivery that's how you get the launcher and then the supply drop that's how you get the mod that produces its ammo the plug-in mod and so all, all together to get all three of them, you're going to need 3,000 influence, 1,000 influence each. And you can have all of those OP things. You can do it. Now, the only condition to the pyro launcher is that you need to destroy all of the play guards on one map. But it can be any difficulty. So you can just go into green zone. Just you basically just beat the game once. Do it on green zone. And you will unlock the independence features. And then you can use them on any difficulty. And yes, they do cost money on Lethal Zone, but they're absolutely worth it. You should definitely pick them up. 
And then you don't have to worry about like, oh, but Fox, I don't have the things that you have. Well, you can have them. You just have to know where they are. And they're right there in the radio call-in menu. Not sure if he heard me or not. Here we go. I don't think he did. Exciting, but it's useful. All right, off we go to these guys. I forgot we were supposed to deliver those. But yeah, like, State of Decay is a game... Like, I'm not saying that skill isn't relevant, but I think what's more important than skill at the game is know-how and having the tricks of the trade. If you have the know-how and the tricks of the trade, then you can beat the game even if you aren't an extremely good player. Now, you probably can't be bad at the game. If you're bad at the game, then that is going to catch up to you because it is still lethal zone. The enemies do quite a bit of damage. But if you're just kind of normal at the game, maybe maybe a little above normal, like you know maybe a six out of ten, then yeah, you can probably these tips and tricks will probably be enough to get you through the lethal zone. Okay, time to deliver the bacon. Actually, I don't know what it is. Let's take let's take a look. It's preserved food, sack of preserved foods. Probably, I think all of the uh, food that comes out of our storage is preserved foods. I appreciate that. There you go. Safe. All right, let's see what our alliance bonus is. It's Fight Club, health and EXP. Now it's like a mid-quality one. It's not bad. It's good to see you alive. Let's make a deal. Okay. Food and gasoline. Hey, Honestly, you. don't need both, Later. surprisingly. We have eight people. Do I want to shut you guys down? You have a mechanic. You have hygiene. You're still on your feet. And no skill. Well. Um, I mean, I do like that bonus. Let me see. Are there other bonuses I want to shut down? Comfort in numbers is pretty good. Medical advice. Uh, what, what's our? F oh, we actually need that. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, remote supply drops. Uh, oh, we have a lot of supply drops. Wow. Uh, some of these are just like pre-order bonuses, though. Uh, emergency med... Well, how much money? Do we actually have money? Okay, yeah, I'll take it. Emergency supply medical supplies? It's honestly not a bad deal. You can't point? use it that often, admittedly. But for 150 influence, we're going to get a rucksack of medicine and um, some other medical knickknacks. It's honestly not... It's not a bad deal. Okay, let's go pick up our stuff. And on Lethal Zone, like, you need to eke out every bit of resources you can get, especially through non-looting methods. And it's not to say that you're not going to... You are going to loot a lot of stuff on the map, but, like, you know, half the map is pre-looted, and the quality of the loot is greatly reduced. So we get... I'm gonna need a lighter look at that. Soon. Those alone pay it off. Like, let's go see what the value... We just got three strong painkillers. Let's see what the value of the three strong painkillers is. So a rucksack of medicine is worth 175 when you buy it from people who are not allies, and 125 if they are allies. So the, the call-in price is basically the in-between. Better than the normal price, not quite as good as the alliance price. Okay, let's see here. But look at this, I also got three strong painkillers. The streets, three, st I'm just gonna sell them right now for 102. So that basically pays it off. And then we also got a first aid kit. So we only paid like 50 influence for it. That's a good deal. Now you're not gonna get the strong painkillers every single time, but we also got a med kit and med kits aren't bad. And that means I might as well buy some more stuff from them. So what do we got today? I'll take the fuel. And 
then yeah, I'll just take the fuel. So we got a survivor in need. Okay, looks like they want to destroy a play guard. You know what, to be honest, that's fine with me. Should be a fairly easy kill. Because they will distract the play guard. And we're actually... I was planning on destroying some play guards too, so... It works for me. Help somebody, but then I can do this all day? You might need to make up your mind. The fact that we're also in a warehouse is going to make this even easier. The warehouse play guard is one of the easiest. Mainly because we can burn all the entrances. Back to squishing. It's hurting. Don't let up now. Let me guess, a zombie got in here. What I'm doing is I'm looking for the uh, the sounds, the sound waves. That's how I know where to shoot. Took him out. Finally, we can start. You come over here. Okay, I got this feral trapped. Okay, or the game will change targets. Sometimes takes so much. Oh, he's another one. I got a rest. Guys, take him out. Okay, thank, thank you, AI. Okay, let me get our reward. Maybe I shouldn't have taken a play guard on my own. Yeah, that was stupid. Thanks, I guess. Don't stress it. See you soon. Um, let me just grab as much as we can. Grab the sample. And uh, looks like we can't really fit too well, actually. Yeah, we can't fit a whole lot. I mean, I could do some shenanigans like stacking some of these items up here, but I'm just not going to do that. That takes too much effort right now, and I, I just want to get all this stuff home. I think that's a pretty good idea. Where do we need to go? We need to take a right. And unfortunately, we can't finish up the base until we get some more of the building materials because the lounge fully upgraded eats up an absolute truck ton of them. And of all the bases we've been in, this is the largest in terms of free building spaces. And the more free building spaces we have, the more materials we need to finish up the base. The good news is that anytime you change bases, Everything is refunded. And since everything is refunded, we don't need to get too much more building materials to move into a larger base. In fact, once you build one of the massive bases up, like the farmland compound, uh, you shouldn't need any more building materials because...
You know, like, you, you just get a refund on them all. Now, one of the reasons why some people don't like this base is because it's just constantly surrounded by zombies. Um, I find the container fort to be more of an annoyance with that issue. Like, the container fort is, like, under, like, like what I feel is, like, a 24-hour siege. You want to try it? Try it. Try it. You want to try it? Feral does not make its mind up. Hey, I'm over here. You want to try it? Oh, he's smart. He's like, no, no, no. And there's a juggernaut. Unbelievable. Fortunately, I had jugger sploders. Okay, here's the second option. We'll just lure him here. Here, come and try it. I like how they can bang on the door even when they're on fire. You want to try and get in here, Juggernaut? Okay, I think he's... I think the AI is having some pathing issues. Oh, yes. Trapped in my own base. Okay, he wandered right past it. Wonderful. Oh. Okay. He's toast. That's, that's the most important thing. All right, let's clean up this stuff. Clean up the vehicle. And then what we can do is... Didn't we have somebody wanted right, to do... Okay, I think these are grumpy butts in disguise. That's a relief. Okay, they pushed the vehicle out of the parking space. Wonderful. Yeah, you know how it is. If it's not one thing, it's another. Okay, throw this in there, that in there. Let's get some more jugger splodes. There we go. And let me just use some of these crampy bandages to heal myself up and we'll be good to go. Just about everything has a use in this game. There are very few things that don't have any use at all. In fact, I don't know anything that doesn't, you know, you can at least sell them. So finding a use for everything in the game is quite good. Now there are some things that people like that I don't really care for. You know, some people like flashbangs. I mean, I'm not saying that you can't use them, but I'm like, yeah. Some people like smoke grenades. I mean, smoke grenades are a little more, are definitely a lot more useful. But I tend to find that, like, I, I just don't play around them. Maybe that's a mistake. If we had bigger guns right now. Hey there. All right, so are these the jerk butts or the losers? Okay, slamming the door in my face. Let me break it down. Yeah, they're setting up a new base. These are the jerk I butts. Hate being disappointed. It really gets under my skin. I wonder if I can turn them into hostiles. Hand over our hard-earned supplies. Let them find their own stuff. Ah, we didn't need it. Oh come on. Now, we could just get rid of these guys immediately. Looks like nobody else is home. With a play card around, that one. There is a play guard nearby, so yeah, it is true. You can come in if you'd like. All I gotta do is... Now, any, anytime people you don't want move in near a play guard, well, remember that the play guard is... 
it really enjoys spawning lots and lots of guards. Now we just gotta get far enough away that the zombies lose interest. This specific zombie might not lose interest though, so give him the old squish. Neither does this one, the squish. These guys are pretty well equipped as part of the issue. Basically, they, since they're like technically grumpy butts in disguise, they're like, they're just more grumpy than average. They're like, you know, we have the tools of grumpiness on our side. But like I said, the good news is that, well, they've decided to set up their new, ba their new base right next to a play guard. Which means there is um, really no limit to the amount of plague zombies that are going to spawn in this basic area. Yeah, come on, plague zombies. Let's wake up. Oh, there they all are. Let's wake up. time on places like this. Come on, you guys. You guys need to wake up. We, we've got some tasty humans. Yeah, tasty humans. Right over here. Much easier to get than me. What we're hoping for right now is for them to kind of create their own, like, s basically we want them to generate their own lethal zone experience. Right now they're doing quite a good job of... We go. Yeah, look at them. They got rifles. They got like what looks like magnum revolvers. No, no, yes, yeah, nothing. Yes, right now, actually, get him. Okay, good. So there, the zombies are screaming. And so the zombies are basically, they're going to have kind of the perpetual incoming zombie. That's what we're hoping for. Just like a never-ending stream of zombies. Especially because they're right next to a play guard. That's what we're hoping for. I got this zombie on the left side who's just kind of dazed and confused. Oh, look at all these. This is great. There we go. Let me back up a little bit. Now, one thing we don't have the advantage of is we don't, since they're not hostile to us... We don't have the advantage of them getting distracted and shooting at me. A resilient, resilient, aren't they? They're doing quite. Oh, oh, oh! And since they're technically on our side, I'm. I can just go and loot them. Hey there, buddy. Let me see what you got here. Don't mind me, you guys. I'm, I'm just here to steal your stuff. I'm gonna need a lighter. Light yeah. Soon. What What did he have? He had a Arctic Warrior. Wow. Sticking around here too long would not be smart. That doesn't he just the, the like I said. This is one of the one of the benefits of Lethal Zone, is that it's very easy to defeat hostile enclaves. Uh, this same strategy does not work nearly as well on Standard Zone. Simply because the, the, the density of zombies is lower. Ah, over here too, I see. Come on, zombies. We got a job to do. Oh, helping them out a little bit there. Okay, they're still on me. Ah! 
Yeah, zombies! Come on over! Plenty of tasty humans. Don't you want to, like, share the blood plague with people? Sure you do. Come on, one of those zombies, all, all we need is for one zombie to scream. If one zombie screams, you know, the, oh, there we go. Now, so now the zombies are coming on their own, and that's the best way to do it. If the zombies come on their own, then, like, I don't have to, like, constantly worry about the zombies coming after me instead. Look, look at her, that, that's a revolver she's shooting. There is no, she, she just doesn't have to reload. She just doesn't have to reload. Like, when is she going to reload? Never? She just doesn't have to reload. Wow. AI. Always cheating. Oh, always, like, the AI. You, you, oh, oh, maybe I shouldn't be mad about, like, people, like, modding and hacking their guns. They'd be, like, 99, 999 rounds in the magazine. The AI does it. Like, what is that? Uh, that six shooter, more like a 50 shooter. Anyways, uh, I, I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to end this episode and just hit the button again and start the next episode right here. So um, we will be screwing those guys over in the next episode. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next episode where we finish these grumpy butts who are cheating off. You know what? They might have infinite ammo, but I've got infinite zombies. Anyways, let me know what you think in the comment section. Like the video feels entertaining. Subscribe for future State of K2 content. And of course, remember that you don't have to be good. Do get good.